Hello YouTube, Ultra Maximus here, and I've got a video response to Realistic 2K's videos. Um, and she posed a question, what else do you collect besides toys? So I thought that was an interesting idea for a video, and I actually collect a lot of things. I am definitely an addict as far as collecting things go. So I'm going to go over a couple different things. Um, obviously, you know, I'm a big Transformers fan. I collect... Uh, tons and tons of Transformers, um, all kinds of action figures, Star Wars, Marvel, comics, DC Comics figures, uh, a bunch of that kind of stuff. But I also collect um, baseball caps. I collect uh, t-shirts with funny logos on them and sayings on them. I collect all kinds of stuff. I collect um, pint glasses, uh, beer pint glasses, and all types of stuff. So this is just another handful of things that I collect that aren't toys. Okay, so another thing I collect uh, would be lighters, uh, specifically torches, cigar torches. I smoke a lot of cigars, and that's got me into collecting torches. So i got a few different kinds here. Um, first of all, extremely cheap, uh, just plastic, uh, Cubano, uh, Cuban uh, lighter. And I just thought this was interesting because... It's so much bigger than a standard lighter because you got to light your cigar. And they're cheap and they're fun. Um, they're just a little bit bigger than a, about twice the size of a normal lighter, which is kind of nice. Um, convenient. Let's see what else we got here. This is kind of, this is a Zippo brand, actually. Torch. Um, you don't see those too often, made by Zippo. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know if you can... See the Zippo label on there, but it's actually made by Zippo, so that's kind of interesting. And of course, Zippo, talk about those, you got to have your standard Zippos, right? The reason I want to show you this one is because here is my giant Zippo. Now this thing, in comparison to a standard Zippo, Dun, dun, dun. This thing is huge, um, and it does, I don't think, yeah, I don't have any fluid in these things, so I don't use these very often. This thing, actually, you can see the spark in it, at least. It actually does work. It is a functional lighter. Um, the funny thing is, I've got a coat that this slides directly into, and in the wintertime, I like to carry this around, and if some girl at the bar asks me for a light, every once in a while I'll pull this out and be like, okay, and the flame, I mean the flame's pretty good size. This actually takes two bottles of Zippo fluid to fill, so this is kind of cool. I really like that. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it um, at an auto parts store is where I found that, so that's kind of fun. I like that. <clears throat> um, let's see, another one I got here. This is a Tiger... Um, torch. I call it my teapot. Kind of reminds me of a teapot for some reason. Um, I got this at the Pipe Puffer here in Greenwood. Uh, this is a freebie that I got. One of the um, they do well, about once a month. They do a an event where a cigar company comes in and they give a bunch of stuff away. And that was one of the things that I got in there. Um, let's see, here's another Zippo type product. It is a Sailor Jerry. Uh, lighter. Um, this was given away with, uh, I forget the brand of cigarettes. There was a cigarette brand that was given these away uh, when you bought the cigarettes. And I love Sailor Jerry. I got Sailor Jerry rum. I've actually got Sailor Jerry tattoos, so I had to have that. Um, this is kind of my workhorse torch. I use this one a lot. Um, it doesn't have a brand name on it. I forget the brand name. But it's actually a three flame torch. Very convenient, and it's got a punch built into it, so you can just punch your cigars. Um, very nice. I use this probably more than any other uh, lighter that I have for my cigars. Uh, let's see. And then we've got my Zycor lighter, and this one is very nice. This is. It's about a $75 torch. It is a two-flame torch, 
very nice. Now this one I like because it's got the brand name on it here. Kind of hard to see. Zykor, uh, X-I-K-A-R, or Zykar, I guess. Um, nice thing about this lighter is it, it's like Zippo, and it has a lifetime guarantee. So if this ever fails, all I have to do is send it back, and they'll either fix it or send me another one. So um, very nice. I got this at the pipe puffer as well. So I, this is a nice one. But to be honest, I really haven't used it much. Um, I think I've had that about the same time. But this one, this is my premier torch that I use um, that I like. This is my Lamborghini torch. Here's the case it comes in. This is an actual leather case. And it's got the Lamborghini logo there. I got this in the Hollywood Smoke Shop in Los Angeles, California, over in Santa Monica. Uh, this is actually made from the leather and the stitching. All that comes from um, scrap parts from the vehicles. Uh, so this is scrap leather used for the seating. Um, here it is inside the case. Looks all pretty. And of course we got Torino Lamborghini. And then the actual lighter itself. And what I like about this lighter, the piece down there is red. What I like about this lighter is this torch, again, this is made from scrap parts from the Lamborghini. So the metal that was left over from casting the vehicle, they used to make these things. And they also use the paint. So this is black, chrome with black. On the top it says Lamborghini. We've got a black back on it. And then when we open it up, it says Lamborghini on the inside. And then it's got a red ring around where the torch is at. Um, also the paint, it's used the same paint. So this is all the leather, all the paint, all that stuff comes from scraps from the car. There's a single torch and you just push the button here on the side, which is nice. <clears throat> Here's its, this is the black cardboard box case that the pouch comes in. This is the pouch is really nice. It's got the, again, same leather used inside, um, same stitching. It's got the bull logo embossed in there and then the Lamborghini on there. It has a magnet clip closed. There's actually a belt loop, which I never used the belt loop on it. Um, but you simply slide your lighter in and there it is. That's how I carry it because I don't want to tear it up. And of course, you've got your cutter and here's the nice thing I like about this it sticks directly on there so that fits very well in your pocket very nice we like this a lot and of course you've got your certificate of authenticity the little card that it comes with and it's got the hologram that certifies it's an actual Lamborghini product and it talks all about it that kind of jazz in there so absolutely cream of the crop of my torches this is probably Oh, goodness. Um, I got the thing on sale, and it was $189 on sale. Um, the leather pouch um, was 70 I want to say 75 79 something like that, um, on sale as well. So, um, I, well, I've been in there two or three times, and not really sale. He kind of bargained with me because they had, a, had quite a few of them they were trying to move and get rid of uh, for new products. So... Um, Hollywood Smoke Shop, Los Angeles, California. Definitely check it out. Very nice, very posh little uh, cigar bar. Uh, really dug it. So, very cool, very nice. Closest thing I'll probably ever own to a Lamborghini is the scrap parts to make a torch, and definitely the cream of the crop in my cigar torch collection. Okay, so yet another thing that I collect are beer bottles. I'm a big beer connoisseur. I love micro beers. In fact, when I travel, I usually try to find local beers of the area and kind of sample them and all that kind of good stuff. We've got a local brewery here in Greenwood where I live called the Oaken Barrel, which is fantastic. If you're ever in Indianapolis, you ought to stop down. Uh, Quan's the owner, great guy, great staff. It's just like one of those local little pubs 
um, that you'd really like. One of these days I'm going to do a YouTube video there, so um, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. But I like to collect bottles that are interesting to me. I guess we'll start with the Oak and Barrel, since I uh, just talked about it, our local brewery. Uh, here is the Indiana Amber at the Oak and Barrel Brewery. Da -da -da. Oh, there it is, Oak and Barrel. Um, this is actually my staple beer. It's probably what I drink the most. Um, Thursday nights is $2 pint nights for the Indiana Amber, if you're ever out there. Of course, if you're a Mug Club member, then it's $2 um, for a mug. And let's see, next one, the Gnawbone. This is a pale ale. This is pretty good. This is the Monday night special, $2 Amber for a pint. <clears throat> Um, Alabaster, pretty nice artwork. Uh, this is the Tuesday night pint special, and if you're a Mug Club member there, then it's $2 you call it on that night, so whatever you want. They also have like a Superfly, and they have a lot of seasonal beers on tap. Um, and one of their seasonals, I've got two, but this is the only one I can find off the top of my head, is the Epiphany. This is the Christmas beer, very nice, very very delicious. Um, it's an Abbey style uh, triple, which is nice. Um, very high octane beer, but uh, very smooth, very light. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. The other one would be an Apple Buzz, which is like this huge, phenomenal, fantastic beer they have there. And they have this big uproar about it. And that's an October beer. Uh, it only comes around once a year. And I don't know what I did with my Apple Buzz bottle, but somewhere around here. Uh, let's see what. So the Alabaster is actually a Belgian style wheat beer. Um, and so the Knobbone, the Indiana Amber is a Hoosier style red ale. Now, a lot of these pieces of art, Oak and Barrel actually bought the licensing the artwork to the Indianapolis Brewing Company and that's where these characters come from. The other artwork like on the knob on here was actually done by a guy named uh, Robbie. Rob who uh, used to be part owner of the Oak and Barrel. He now runs a comic book shop. Uh, he owns the Comics University here in Greenwood um, but that's his original art and there are a few other beers that have his original art on it as well and he worked on transferring the old um, artwork from the Indianapolis Brewing Company which is actually that's Lady Victory who sits atop the Indianapolis uh, monument downtown the Sailors and Soldiers Monument the Circle of Indianapolis which is why we're called the Circle City if you ever wondered uh, let's travel a bar abroad I got a bunch of different stuff here uh, I like this one this is an IPA, the single wide. That's hilarious. Love it. Uh, let's see. This one, this is a Stone Leviathan Ale. Um, I actually got, I just love that bottle. It's actually etched. It's not, not uh, a stick or anything. I got that out in Los Angeles. That was a good beer. Um, let's see. What else we got? Alpha King, if you're familiar with the Alpha King, Pink Floyds, or Pink Floyds, Three Floyds. Pretty good stuff. Um, Bud Light. Uh, the reason I have this is because this is the Super Bowl edition here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Not a lot of Indianapolis today. Have you noticed that? Come to Indianapolis. It's great. Um, the Hop Bomber. This is a pretty good one. I got this in a, a baseball party. This was pretty delicious. World War II Bomber. Um, another California beer, Monty Python's Holy Ale. I cross out the gr. So that's pretty funny. It's pretty good beer, too. <clears throat> Got it at the Rolling Stone in Los Angeles, down in Hollywood. Um, let's see. A Werftiner. A little German action there. <clears throat> There's another funny one. Uh, this is the... Uh, Tyranian Brewing Company, Bitter Woman, IPA. Gotta love a Bitter Woman. And we've got the tap number 20. 
a pale ale. This is uh, commemorating the end of Prohibition, 1933. Um, the Wilbur Bra House. This is an Oktoberfest. This is actually an Indiana a local, very small, upstart local brewery. So um, actually pretty decent beer. Here we have for all of the Transformers fans, the Hoptimus. I call it the Hoptimus Prime. He's got a pretty cool little robot thing on there. Uh, this is an IPA, uh, Imperial India Pale Ale. Pretty good stuff. Really liked it. A lot of beer. Um, let's see. Barley Island. East Coasty. Uh, Dirty Helen. I think it's East Coast, right? Tavern style brown ale. Yeah. And let's see what else we got. Zombie Dust. This is another Three Floyds beer. Very cool artwork. They do a good job with their art. <clears throat> I've got tons of beers that sit up on top of my kitchen in the, the other room. And then here's an old style. This is from last year. Um, it's painted up like a baseball bat for the Chicago Cubs. The little Cubs logo on it. Go Cubs. It is baseball season again. And they're the official Chicago beer since... 1902 there and of course we've got the Cubs logo around the old style logo and of course it looks like a baseball bat that's what it's supposed to look like a little baseball bat <clears throat> so that's always fun and then not really a beer bottle but I would say this is probably the jewel of my beer collecting I've got a bunch of pint glasses and stuff too I'm not going to get into that but this is the jewel of my beer collecting. This is my yard of beer. But what's nice about this, I got this at the Slippery Noodle for $175. And this is a Indianapolis 500th 100th anniversary running yard. And it's got the logo on it. Turn it around. <laughs> It actually has, of course, the Indianapolis 500. It's got the statue on it, or the trophy. And then um, it says celebrating uh, celebration of greatness, blah, blah, blah. It's Miller Lite produced it. And then on this side, you can see a bunch of stuff going on. That is every single winner for a hundred years on that side, um, which is fantastic. And I really like this one because I live here in Indianapolis, obviously. Have you guessed that yet? And a couple other things I like about this. One, um, this is fun at parties. I always take it to parties that I go to. Uh, and so this is a used piece of memorabilia. And it's the 100th anniversary, obviously. And I got to go to the 100th running, so that was kind of nice, kind of fun. Uh, I got to take a good friend of mine. He hadn't been there in years, and we happened to go on the 100th running. Um, we actually got in for free, which is kind of nice. And I took him down to the Slippery Noodle, which he'd never been. It was his first time, and then uh, they had that sitting there, and um, I was able to pick it up for $175. So absolutely worth it. Very cool. Very nice. Looks great sitting on the kitchen counter. Can you tell I'm a single guy? Um, but wonderful piece of memorabilia. And yes, this does get used. So there are certain things I actually use. Um, so there's another collection. Okay, so I'm also an avid reader. I collect books. I like uh, reading good stories. Uh, who doesn't, right? Uh, some of my favorite authors are, I would say, Michael Crichton. Um, oh, who else? I like Stephen King. I like um, H.P. Lovecraft. I like um, Dan Brown's pretty good. Um, goodness, I can't really think top of my head. I got a few of the books, some of my favorites here. Um, the 
Complete Tales of H.P. Lovecraft. This is a great one. Uh, I like this a lot. This actually has a Ford by Stephen King in it. So, good stuff. I actually have in my movie collection a uh, black and white silent film of Call of Cthulhu, which is very good. So, this is a good book. If you haven't read H.P. Lovecraft, it's definitely a classic. Um, also read a lot of the other classics, like um, science fiction classics. Um, um, Jules Verne, um, H.G. Wells, all those guys. Good stuff. Uh, this is a current novel I'm reading, Michael Crichton's Pirate Latitudes. He's probably my favorite author, I would say, Michael Crichton. So I'm about halfway through this book. Um, real good. If you haven't picked it up, definitely pick it up. It's his last finished book. He's got another book that's out there that he started, but uh, I think either his son or his partner finished. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, let's see here. I'm also, like I said, uh, Ernest Hemingway is another favorite. So this is the complete works of Ernest Hemingway, and this is actually from the Hemingway House in Key West, and it's got in it somewhere a nice gold uh, Ernest Hemingway uh, Museum in Key West, Florida. Nice little bookmarker that came with it. This is a classic book. This is my vacation book. I like to read this on the beach, uh, warm weather down in Florida. I read this uh, quite a bit. Good stuff. <clears throat> Um, I'm also a Tolkien fan. What nerd isn't, right? So this is my uh, The Hobbit uh, Collector's Edition hardback. Very nice. They're very cool. Um, it's a really nice book. Nice, uh, well, well done, well put together. These are kind of hard to find now, so if you see this... You might want to pick it up because they don't make they don't make these anymore. This is out of print. Uh, to go along with that, I have got the um, Lord of the Rings book. It goes with it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have anything on the outside. It's just in a red case. But the book itself is rather cool. It looks nice, like a bound book would be. It's so very cool. I have actually only read these copies one time. And those are kind of collector's editions. Um, I've got a set of old paperbacks that I read mostly when I read those. And then... Ooh, these are dusty. Um, I've also got this, J.R. Tolkien. This is the unfinished... Tales of J A J R R J A A J R R R Tolkien, and this is, I believe, this is the first edition. Yes, this is the first edition. Very nice. Uh, it's got an introduction by Chris Tolkien, his uh, son, I believe. Right, that's his son. So that's that's pretty cool. And I've also got the Silmarillion, Marilillion, or however you, know, how you pronounce it, uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, this is nice. It's got a little map, a little earth in there. This is not a first edition by any means. Uh, I don't know. Copyright 1977, so it's in very good shape for a 19, uh, 1977 book. I just don't have the jacket to it along with the other one. That's unfortunate, but this essentially, if you've not read this, this is almost an encyclopedia to Middle Earth. That's how this thing reads. And um, I actually, this I found this book at work years ago when I used to work for RCA, and somebody had it and left it in a cubicle um, when they left the job, and it was one of the things they'd left behind, so I went ahead and kept it, which was nice. Um, and the unfinished tales are just, 
a bunch of short stories that Tolkien never had actually finished. A lot of it's background stories. So these two books actually go together quite well. The background information on Lord of the Rings. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on here? Um, Neanderthal. This is a great book. Uh, John Darton wrote it. If you can find it, pick it up. It's about a pair of scientists that go and find a, a living tribe of Neanderthals. And it's actually out of print. So if you can find it in a used bookstore, definitely pick it up. This is awesome. I would love to see this turned into a film. John Darton, excellent author. Of course, you got to have the Da Vinci Code. I uh, like the book much more than I did the movie. I have not seen the second movie. I read the book, um, but this was this was all the rage when it came out, and it's it's a good read if you've not read it. It's pretty good, and of course I've got uh, first editions of Jurassic Park. Um, back on it. Probably my all-time favorite novel. Uh, I picked this up. This is a used copy. I've got another copy somewhere laying around, but. Um, I've got, uh, the other copy I had was not a first edition, so this one's a first edition. And I also have a first edition of The Lost World. Uh, just the back up there, something has survived. Um, another good book to have, first editions of. And well, I think it's about it as far as novels go that I've got out here. Um, one more collection, right? Another thing I collect is comic books. Go figure. I've got a stack of stuff here. Uh, just some random junk. Just let's see what we got. All right. Uh, the Mouse Guard. Love the Mouse Guard. Gotta love the Mouse Guard. Uh, let's see. Superboy. It's kind of older. I've got... An atomic Robo. Um, we have the Mighty Thor. Uh, Super Crooks. If you've not read that yet, that's a pretty good one. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got an Action Comics. Eh, Incredible Hulk. So there's just kind of stuff laying around. I've got a huge stack of stuff. Um, I'm also a big fan of the Green Arrow series, The Longbow Hunters. I got the whole um, collection at a... These are all the original graphic novels, not the actual individual books, but the graphic novels. Um, at Half Price Books, I think I got these. Those are always fun. And then just a random selection of old comics. Um, 500th edition of... Detective Comics. That's kind of fun. Issue number 500. It's got Hawkman and Batman and Hawk Girl and looks like Plastic Guy. Stretchy. Um, it's a good one. What if Spider Man had joined the Fantastic Four? Remember the What If series? Oh, I love the What Ifs. This is number one. What If number one? Yeah, it's always that's always a fun book. And you can't go wrong with a giant-sized man-thing. This is number three. Um, got to love the giant-sized man-thing. Don't you wish you had a giant-sized man-thing? Ladies, you know you like the giant-sized man-thing. Um, that title has always cracked me up. So, Oh, let's see. What else? Um, this is... Um, a wizard comics uh, publication with uh, Michael Turner, kind of his story, how he came up as an artist. Um, this was produced right before he passed away. He's probably one of my favorite comic book artists, and he's he's got a really interesting story. If you see this, you might want to pick it up. That's an interesting read. Um, it's 300. That's always a good one. This is the hardback. I've got the original issue somewhere, but... Saw that kind of laying around. This is kind of cool. A friend of mine, no, I think I, got, I picked this up. Um, the DC Comics Cover Girls, Oops. Wonder Woman versus Wonder Woman. 
Uh, this basically goes through a bunch of artwork and kind of looks at some of the cover girls of DC Comics. Very cool stuff. So a lot of lots and lots of covers, and they talk about the covers. Uh, and it goes through and talks about it. This is a good coffee table book. I just really like the art. Um, I like pinup uh, artwork. I think it's pretty cool. And just the fact that they uh, went through and did that with the DC Comics girls. And that kind of talks about the history of some of the covers and everything. Um, very cool stuff. Nice book. And then this, a friend of mine got me for my birthday one year. This is the DC Comics Encyclopedia. Alex Ross cover there. Um, we call this the Knowledge Base. Uh, this basically goes through all, almost all of the DC comic book characters and explains who they are and origins and all that kind of stuff. Um, I use this for work quite a bit. Um, love this book. Uh, it gets used very, very frequently around here. And um, very nice. Definitely a must-have. I'd like to get a Marvel version of it, but... Um, that one works for me right now. And then this isn't really a comic book. It's a kid's book. But I found this when I was going. I was coming home from Los Angeles uh, and San Diego on a business trip. And I stopped in Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix, Arizona. And I saw this uh, while I was waiting in, a, in the airport. And I couldn't pass it up. Who pooped in the park series? This is hilarious. Scatting tracks with kids. This is a little kid's book that basically goes through and it talks about tracks they find and poop that they find. I'll get a good picture. There we go. See, she's got found the little poops. Okay. And it goes through it. it this is absolutely hysterical. Cracks me up. I mean, it's, it's a good little kid's book, I guess. Um, it's a different kinds of kid's book. In the back, it's got, it shows the animal's tracks what animal did it and the poop of the animal cracks me up there's a whole series that's out there it's the uh, who pooped uh, series it's produced by far country press um the author uh, where's the thing that talks about the author here is uh, gary robinson um and uh robert rath looks like they're involved in it there's a whole series of them like this particular one is the Sonoran Desert, and then they've got the Art, the Acadia National Park, Big Bend National Park, the Black Hills, Colorado Plateau, Death Valley, Glacier National Park, Grand Canyon, Grand Teton, the Great Smoky Mountains, um, Northwoods Olympic National Park, Red Rock Canyon, uh, the Rocky Mountain National Park, Sequoia and the Kings Canyon National Park, uh, the Shenandoah National Park, Yellowstone National Park, and Yosemite National. So, um, it's good stuff. Get the scoop on poop. I love this. Find out who pooped. Um, and it's kind of a Dora and Diego looking kids. Um, love this book. I think this is hilarious. This actually sits in my bathroom. Um, I've got a half uh, laundry basket thing that sits in front of the toilet. And this actually sits there. So anybody that goes to my bathroom, this is their reading material in my bathroom is who pooped in the park. So I kind of want to, next time I'm out and about, next time I go to some of the national parks, um, uh, probably this summer, I'm going to visit a few of them. Um, I, I'm going to have to look for more of the Who Poop series. Guy's got a website. Um, yeah, Gary Rob, Robson wrote it, and Rob Rath, looks like he drew the book. And let's see, is there, what's the website? Do they even, there is a website for it. I know there's a Facebook page for it. I, I liked the Facebook page. Um, and they talk about different parks and stuff like that. And, um, it's the, the, the guy is in all honesty, the guy is definitely, he, what, he's making a legitimate book for kids to go out and do something in the national parks and get to know nature and all that kind of stuff. And I think he's combining, um, uh, fun by tracking the animals and of course the scat the make the kids, um, you know, kids like poop. I guess. I don't know. I just thought it was a very funny little thing and um, definitely the perfect bathroom reading material. So there we go. 
there's my comic collection and continued reading collection. All right, so another thing I collect is movies. As you can tell, I have got a ton of movies. I think I've got several hundred. I think I'm actually up over a thousand at this point. TV, video games, and more movies. <coughs> There's another giant stack of them. Now, this is a double stack. The entire wall behind these is filled with movies as well. And then we also have tons of movies up here. Again, this is another double stack with stuff behind it. And of course, I don't want to forget this side over here. Tons and tons and tons of movies. So I'm a huge, huge movie buff. I think the last time I counted, I probably got somewhere around 1,400 movies on DVD, Blu-ray, Blu-ray 3D. So got a few things to watch if nothing's on TV, which is always a good thing. All right, another thing I collect is sea creatures. Can you collect those? I'm an avid aquarist, and this is my aquarium. I actually do a YouTube series called Peanuts Reef, is what I call it. Now, these two guys here, the two striped guys, those are called Bengai Cardinals. These blue guys are Chromies, blue-green Chromies. I call them the Chromie Homies. That little guy, the red one, is a fire clownfish. Some people call it a flame clownfish. We also have some corals. That is a tree-type coral. These two are zinnias frog spawn and a couple stars, some more stars, some pipe corals, another tree coral, and a big tree coral. Uh, that silver guy there is what's called a mono. That's a diamond-backed goby, swimming around, kind of looking like a snake. Uh, we've got a sailfin molly. He was actually the first fish I put in here as a starter fish. Up under there is my long spine black sea urchin. And that little spotted guy is my spotted hawkfish. Well, I think uh, the sailfin tang is going to make an appearance here. There he is. My sailfin tang. Um, underneath there is a cleaner shrimp. That's an eel cleaner shrimp. And here we have a Percula clownfish. Nemo. Kind of. They all want fed now. <laughs> uh, back here we have a another eel cleaner shrimp. And then underneath we have a coral banded shrimp. It's kind of hiding at the moment. A bunch of snails. The big one's a turbo snail. You've got lots of crabs everywhere in the tank. Lots of little snails. And then down here is my brittle starfish who pretty much has the Imperial logo tattooed on his body. So that's pretty cool. So, this is something else I collect, I suppose you could say, would be aquarium marine fish. If you're interested in aquariums, check out my Peanuts Reef videos. Pretty fun. I like it. It's a nice hobby to get into. Very calm, very relaxing.
All right. So another thing that I collect is refrigerator magnets. This is just some of them. I actually have boxes of them. Um, I got comic book stuff. There's my dog. Um, comic book stuff. I actually collect a lot of magnets of places I've been. Pensacola. My sister lives down there. Big Key West guy. Indianapolis 500, which is coming up here at the end of the month, which we will be going to. Evil Monkey, Key West again, Pensacola Beach, Florida, more Key West, Los Angeles, Hollywood, Epcot, Disney, Phoenix, Arizona, Oak and Barrel Brewery. That's a magnet I actually made. Um, I just glued a magnet on the back of it. That is a local brewer here in Greenwood, Indiana. Very nice. Go there quite a bit. I use my homo mater where I graduated. Uh, Armadillo is from Texas. I've got the National Museum of Naval Aviation in Pensacola there. San Francisco, Milwaukee. Uh, this is down in uh, Key West again. Perdido Key, where I've got my condo. Slippery Noodle Inn, which is the oldest bar here in Indiana, downtown Indianapolis, if you're ever here. Very nice. Blues Bar. Harry Truman. Classic comics. And see what we got down here. California again. This I mainly got because of the bottle opener. That was a staple on a trip. I took. Washington. Atlanta. Bike Week. That's an old one. Disney World again. Key West. Of course, we have to have the Transformers. And our... World Champion Indianapolis Colts. They won the Super Bowl. Venice Beach, California. Uh, Panama City, Florida. Go to Florida a lot. And then, of course, I got my easy. And the reason I have this one is because uh, my mother actually she's passed now, so I keep that around. But. Yeah, this is just a small bit. I actually have a bunch more in the other room in a box somewhere. It just it gets too cluttered. So I mix them up every now and then. And this is pretty much the Florida box. So and this will be a good one. There you go. So this is the dog. My dog Sheila as a puppy. And she went to the vet for the first time. And come here. Here she is now. Say hi to all of you two. Sit. Good girl. Say hi, YouTube. Say hi, YouTube. I love you, YouTube. <laughs> all right. So, just something else I collect. Magnets. Okay, so another thing that I collect would be movie props and prop replicas. So, another thing that I like to uh, collect, this here is the Crystal Skull from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, this came with the Blu-ray release of the film. Very nice. Very cool. Be a lot cooler if it was a little bit bigger. Um, speaking of Indiana Jones, we also have the Fertility Idol. Very ugly, very hideous. But we do have that, so that's a pretty cool thing. Look at my butt. Like that a lot. And the other piece of Indiana Jones that we have is his fedora. And this is an actual Indiana Jones brand. And it also says it's got the Indiana Jones logo up here. So this is the actual um, movie prop replica fedora from the movies. I actually wear this in the wintertime. Uh, so this is a used prop. I do use this. In fact, um, talk about hats, other articles of clothing. Another one that we have is the Marty McFly Back to the Future cap. And I actually wanted one of these forever. 
I uh, was down in Florida when I saw this for the first time. I'm like, I gotta have that hat, gotta have that hat. And I finally found another one. It took me about 20 years to pick this back up. So um, this is very cool. We like that a lot. Um, we also have the Blues Brothers sunglasses. Let's do this. Um, they are produced by the Slippery Noodle Inn here in Indianapolis, which is an official house of blues. So those are always cool. Um, we also have Green Lantern's power ring. This I actually had long before um, the movie came out, and this thing is very heavy, very cool. Um, it does fit onto my finger, but it doesn't like to come off, so I don't really wear it all that often. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very heavy ring. Very cool though. Very nice. We also have. Two Faces coin, good side and a bad side. This came with the special edition um, Batman Begins. No, Dark Knight. It was a Dark Knight set. Yeah, Dark Knight. Uh, Two Face was in uh, the Dark Knight, so that was in one of the collector sets. I like to play with that, mess around on it. And of course, we have the precious. And this came with a Lord of the Rings Blu-ray set is what this came with. I can't really pick up the Elvish writing, but it's on there. <clears throat> Actually, this is my second one of these. I had another one that came with a little Mount Doom, but it's packed up somewhere. So, Second set of that. Now, this isn't all clothing and stuff. This is not movie memorabilia, but it is memorabilia. Um, I went to an Unknown Henson concert. If you don't know who Unknown Henson is, look him up. He is awesome. He is the king of rockabilly and uh, troubadours. He's like a cross between Dracula and Elvis. Great music. Fantastic guitarist. He autographed a hat at the concert for me. And he also autographed the PBR can, because they were selling PBR. So he actually autographed my beer can, which was very nice. Very great guy. Sat around after the concert, talked to all these fans, and um, signed whatever they wanted and signed. So that was very cool. Thought I'd throw them in as a mention. We also have the Hellraiser Hellbox. Had this for a while. Very cool. And I've had this for years, probably since the 90s I've had that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We have a mounted Batarang. This is a actual Batarang from um, Batman Forever. Yeah. Um, and this thing, it's heavy too. If you took that off of there, off the mount, um, that would really do some damage. So, uh, very nice uh, prop there. Uh, we also have Darth Vader's lightsaber. How many of us have these FX, right? These uh, fantastic, just so well done. Very nice, heavy metal rubber, and of course, very cool. We like it. Every geek should have one. <laughs> Uh, it's always fun. Uh, let's see what else do we got here. We also have uh, this is about as close as I can get to a prop replica of the Gates of Jurassic Park. Uh, this is a little statue that came with uh, my Jurassic Park Blu-ray. I just like it. I didn't get to do a review on it. I show it in a review, but figured I'd show it here. I was talking about props and movie pieces. Very nice. Very fun. And just one more to show because I got so much garbage. This is just something that's kind of fun that I found in the closet. This is an actual Magnum PI shirt um, that I got in Hawaii. And the label even has got the Honolulu Hawaii tag in it. So um, very cool, very nice. 
I'm way too fat for this shirt, so that pretty much just kind of sits in the closet, but that was a nice piece that I found. I went ahead and picked up. I think it was like 40 bucks. Um, very cool. Very neat. We like that a lot. So, yet another thing that I collect is movie props and prop replicas. So, there's another collection. All right, and my final thing that I collect is anniversary vehicles. This is my 35th 1999 Mustang convertible. One of the little run around car, nice little convertible. I found this on a car lot. Pretty good shape. We're going to get it repainted, get some motor work done, and a few things need fixed here and there. Like this piece needs this one piece. This is very strange. This one piece right here, kind of messed up, but the rest of the boot back here is fine. So other than that, really good shape. It's a nice looking little car, and we know it's a anniversary edition because she says so. 35th anniversary. So there's that one, and back there is my Jeep, it's my winter car. It's not an anniversary, but it is a Cherokee, Grand Cherokee Limited. <laughs> so I've even got to get the limited edition Cherokee, right? So and I've got one other vehicle I'm going to show you, and that's in the garage. So there's the Mustang. Uh, here's my Jeep. Again, nothing too spectacular about it. This is my winter car. Drive around in the snow and the ice. But I just find it funny that it's a Grand Cherokee Limited, a true collector. Right? Goofy, huh? There's the Jeep. And walk into the garage here. It's messy. But here's my other anniversary vehicle. It's my 100th anniversary Harley Davidson Sportster. And I've had this, well, since 2003 and the 100th anniversary. And the reason that I got it, it was different than all the other Harleys. All the other Harleys were black and silver. And this has got the old flat tracker, or flat, uh, flat track racer paint job. So. She's very dirty. It's been winterized. I gotta get it out, put new tires on it. <clears throat> and we know it's a hundredth anniversary because we've got the hundredth anniversary logo on it. I need to get this fender fixed. It's messed up. Somebody backed into it to a parking lot, which is unfortunate. But the other way that you know, I mean that's just a decal. But the other way that you know is right here on the motor block they put the 100th anniversary stamp in it. So if it does not have the stamp into the motor, it is not a 100th anniversary motorcycle. <coughs> so here it is. I put this on. I took this off, replaced it. Um, one of the black round and kind of give a different look. And I put the little Harley Sculpt tank cap thing on there. Pink job, a little like 83, but I like it. It's nice to look like. Another thing that you know, it's got the 100th anniversary logo here. And it's got the 2003 XL Sportster 100th anniversary badge in the dash itself. So again, it's got to have that dash in there, or that stamp on the bike. Otherwise, it's not an anniversary. Now, a good friend of mine got me this, which is a little toy version of the bike, which I found awesome. So that was, that was cute of him to do. But there it is. My other anniversary vehicle, my Centennial Harley-Davidson ready for the summertime, ready to go out and play. 
all right guys there you go um those are some of the things that i collect that are not toys uh that are not transformers so this is kind of a different um video for me uh that i don't usually do and i hope you guys enjoyed it get to know me a little bit better i want to pose the question back out to you guys as well what do you collect that aren't transformers that is not a reef tank that is uh, not movies, uh, maybe not comics, uh, you know, whatever. Basically, what do you collect that's not toys? Um, especially from the Transformers group. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, um, good idea for the video, um, realistic, and uh, check her website out or her YouTube site out. It's realistic, uh, R E A L I S T I K K videos, realistic videos. And she's got a lot of good stuff. She's She does a lot of figures and toys. And she does a lot of cosplay kind of stuff. And she's really hot. So definitely check her out. Um, gotta love the hot girl that's into the nerd stuff. And uh, she does a good job. Goes out to conventions and things too. So um, hats off to you, my dear. And I look forward to some of uh, your other videos. Post them here. Post them on uh, hers. And let's get out there. Get out in YouTubing. You guys have a great week. And thanks for watching.